But I did used to feel that there was something kind of punk in the sensibility. Not, it certainly wasn't, there was nothing hippie about it. No, I mean, oh, no. it, it, was, it was violent and there was, even, there may not be anarchy in Dread, but there's certainly anarchy in Mega City One and mm -hmm. there was a chaos about it and a craziness about the kind of ideas that could push their way into the stories. Mm. Um, uh, and I certainly picked up off on all of that. Dread has an adult aspect to it. I always felt like I was maybe slightly too young to be reading it, that it was aimed at people higher. It was like watching an 18 certificate film when you were 12. Uh, and, um, uh, and, and that, that stayed true. They always stood up to further readings and it also felt like Dread changed as he got older. As you got older, he got older too. I think that was quite important. His character changes over the course of the comic books as John got more cynical and darker <laughs> about the world and you know, that came through in, the, in, the, in his writing. Um, the, the blocks, the habitation blocks in which people live, of which this is part of uh, a set are, are colossal. They're, they're like cities. Um, they have a lot of stuff contained within them, not just shopping areas, but medical centers and schools and hospitals. And it, you, you could be born and live and die within one of these blocks and never really set foot without it if you wanted to, if you had to. Um, and establishing that has been a key part of the film. The city is a character for sure, and in this instance, uh, the block is a character mm. too. I'm hoping we'll sort of smuggle this film in, that, that people, their expectations will have been defined by that first film, mm. and we can, we can come out as a whole different thing, much more yeah. hardcore yeah. and edgy, and you know, it's drugs and violence and brutality, and uh, there's something very rough about this. Yeah. Yes, and it I, is, yeah, it, it, it's rough. It, it, yeah, it should come out, I hope it comes out of left field. And I think the dimension in Mama is that for a lot of her life she's been wondering why are all these bullets missing me. There's a kind of suicidal, uh, nihilistic streak and um, she's, she's on a course in her life and it's, it's sort of always to meet dread in a funny kind of way. Uh, I think she knows that. Caleb's a... Uh, an ambitious psychopath within her organization, and Caleb is her right-hand man. Um, Mama's backstory is she was a hooker who got uh, brutalized by one of her clients, and that was the turning point. And Caleb, we like to think, was among the pimps that were running that organization was someone who'd been more sympathetic, and she kind of took him with her on that journey. Um, she formed a gang, started taking over this block, and, uh, and managed to get hold of uh, the chemists that were creating this cool new drug, narcotic, in Mega City One, slow-mo. And she's, she's running the manufacturing distribution of this drug. How you take it and your brain just starts running at a fraction of its normal speed. Um, and uh, I, I guess the basic idea was it, it has, it's, it's like a kind of mix between heroin and LSD, you could say. It's got hallucinogenic properties, you know, distortion properties about it. But it's got something in common with heroin as well because you could say, I mean, this isn't true of everybody, but you could say that if you're in a, a hard place in your life, you take heroin to escape it and so that a hard existence becomes easier for a brief period of time. And one of the things about very extreme slow motion is that it can make almost anything look beautiful and hypnotic and graceful. Mm. Uh, and I'm talking about very, very extreme slow motion of the kind you'd see in a nature documentary that reveals the odd motion of a hummingbird's wings or you know, whatever, you know, the way water glances off something and collects and reconnects mm. and that kind of stuff. Slow-mo would give you moments of beauty and peace and tranquility. Even if there's someone getting a bullet pushing through their cheek and pulling out their teeth, there's something about it that would hypnotize mm. you and you'd find it beautiful in the grip of this drug. And um, so there's a rationale for it. It's not just truly a rationale. It's not just like a, a cinematic device because slow-mo can make violence look balletic. It's, in fact, we're actually trying to take it away from that ballet and make it revealing in other kinds of ways. 
I think the, the main attraction of Dredd is that he's a combination of good guy, bad guy. In some respects, you're all for what he's doing. In other respects, you think, well, thank God he doesn't exist today. Although Dredd would never see it that way. Dredd sees himself as upright, righteous. Anderson is uh, fragile, interesting, intelligent, and you wouldn't think she could ever make a judge because she's got too much heart. Um, they're a really interesting contrast, the pair of them, especially the way Alex has mixed them together in this film.